Your car is spying on you and that sucks. Sure, we expect it from our phones and other smart devices like our smart fridges, but our cars, why? Why must they desecrate the holiest of sanctuaries? Yeah, I yell at other drivers. I sing to myself. I try to name all 50 states to pass the time on my commute. But what are they gonna do with all that data? Corporations have a lot to gain with your private information, no matter how small those nuggets of info might be. YouTube gives you suggested videos based off what you watched. Google uses your searches to sell targeted ads, and Amazon tracks what products you order and suggests new ones based off your history. Or they suggest slightly different versions of a product I just bought. Amazon, I don't need another jean steamer. I bought one and it works just fine. Car companies are no different. They collect information on you, whether that's how far you drive, where you drive, how efficient your car is, or what you listen to on the way to work. All that data is valuable in figuring out exactly who you are as a consumer. So what are they doing with all this information and how is it legal? We'll get to that. But first, let's talk about how long this has been going on. Spoiler a lot longer than you think. General Motors realized pretty early on that data collection from cars was useful. OnStar was founded in 1996 with an aim to make driving safer. Yes, OnStar, the blue button you hit to be saved after a car crash. The OnStar system wasn't just a way to call an ambulance though. It was one of the first of its kind to offer hands-free calling, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and other emergency services that were included with your subscription. Later on though, it evolved to track diagnostics, vehicle location, and how often you use your vehicle all in real time. According to the OnStar website, the information collected can be used to improve the quality, safety, and security of their products and services, to develop new products, services, and for marketing. OnStar is admitting that their data is used for marketing. They're basically doing the same thing as Google. OnStar states that all this information is presented to the driver before they buy a subscription. If the driver does not consent to their data being harvested, then that particular car isn't tracked. So why doesn't everyone just not consent to OnStar tracking their data? This type of data has never been used in cars before, so people don't expect it. Literally millions of drivers have been tracked by OnStar who probably just think of it as an emergency service. Plus, nobody reads those contracts anyway. How many of us have actually read the fine print on contracts we sign? I've literally never read one word of an iTunes agreement, yet I'll click red every single time. I don't need another thing getting between me and Limp Biscuit. Oh, Wes, you beautiful son of a But the worst part, you see that star on the logo? Flip it upside down, and what do you get? That's right, the Order of the Eastern Star, the symbol of the Freemasons. Explain yourself, OnStar. What are you doing with all my data? What do you know about me? What are you telling Uncle Sam? OnStar was the first, but it definitely wasn't the last to spy on you. Today, every car company has their own way of tracking real-time data from drivers. The term connected vehicle describes a car that transmits data via the internet. And according to ABI research, 98% of new cars sold in the US and Europe will be connected vehicles by the year 2021. As of today, there are more than 78 million cars on the road with embedded cyber connections. That's a lot of data. So where does it all go? Well, that data can be super useful when it comes to improving transportation, reducing admissions, reducing traffic accidents, and of course, detecting crashes. But in my opinion, the most valuable connected device is the Event Data Recorder, or EDR. It's basically a black box you would find in an airplane, but for your car. EDR is a generic term for a tamper-proof memory device that is triggered in the event of an accident. Anything from a sudden change in wheel speed to an engine fault can trip the device. Once it's triggered, it records a wide range of elements that might be useful to crash investigators. Things like whether or not the seatbelts were buckled, whether brakes were applied, the speed at the time of the crash, anything like that. Most EDRs store this data on a rugged memory device within the car, but systems like OnStar transmit some of that data to off-site locations. While GM and OnStar have streamlined their data collection and processing, many car companies don't really know how to consume the massive stream of data they're receiving from their vehicles. That's when a company like Autonomo comes in, like Winston Wolf, to clean things up. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. 
Autonomo describes itself as the first connected car data marketplace. Frankly, a very ominous description for a company that takes all the raw data from drivers, analyzes it, and wraps it up in a neat little package with a bow on top. Why does it need a bow, you ask? Well, because Autonomo sells that package to third-party companies and splits the profits with car manufacturers. That's f***ed up, man! <sighs> this data can be so-called benign info, like your commute routes, your average speed, and whether or not you wear your seatbelt. Or they can be selling more personal data, like who you listen to on the radio, what stores you frequent, or even your weight. Yeah, those little sensors on your seat for the airbags, your car knows you're a thick boy. Look, I'm insecure enough about my weight as it is. I don't need Autonomo knowing how much I weigh so Amazon could suggest XXL t-shirts and a shake weight for some reason. Why do they even sell those things? It's just like you're just, I'm not even gonna do that on camera. Worse, it's unclear who the car companies are selling your data to. Understandably, they won't come out with a list of who is buying your data. I will say it does make sense for a navigation company like Waze to use it to optimize routes, or insurance companies to know if you wear a seatbelt or not and hike up your premium. The biggest problem with all this data collecting is that it's still pretty new to the car industry, so it hasn't been regulated yet. Other industries like healthcare, education, and finance, they collect your data too, but there are strict laws dealing with how they use it. Don't worry though, a bunch of car companies got together and wrote a letter to the Federal Trade Commission promising they wouldn't do anything nefarious with all the data they're collecting. That makes me feel great. I don't have to worry about anything. Key features of the letter included transparency regarding how automakers collect, use, and share information retrieved from vehicles, heightened protections for sensitive types of consumer data, and limitations on the sharing of geolocation information with government authorities. But promises don't mean shit. And it's clear that data is already being abused by car manufacturers. I mean, how many of you even knew about this before you clicked on this video? The data we are unknowingly giving up means tons of dollar signs for car manufacturers, and this is just the start of it. Profit is only going to get bigger as time goes on. In fact, a new report by consulting firm McKinsey estimates that revenue in this sector could reach 450 to 750 billion dollars by the year 2030. I don't know what it is, but something tells me car manufacturers might not stick to their guidelines they set in their little letter. That's a lot of money. So yes, if you own a new car, chances are your car is spying on you, but there is something you can do. If you're buying a new car, go ahead and opt out of the data tracking if it worries you. But remember, chances are you have a cell phone which is doing the same exact thing. So there might not be any way to avoid it unless you're completely off the grid. Honestly, I could care less if car manufacturers know that I'm driving a Jersey Mike's three times a week, but I understand why other people would have a problem with it. After all, where can we be in complete privacy if not in our cars? Speaking of spying, there's something you can do right now to protect your privacy online. This episode of Wheelhouse is brought to you by ExpressVPN, a service I personally use on my phone and my laptop, even at work. I don't trust anybody. When you shop online, it's possible for people to steal your credit card information. I would rather people don't steal my credit card information, which is why I use ExpressVPN. For less than $7 a month and a 30-day money-back guarantee, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and other important identifiers from other people online. Every website can see your IP address and location, even in incognito mode. I bet you didn't know that. With ExpressVPN, I feel safe from the prying eyes of nosy websites and advertisers and those freaking hackers trying to steal my stuff. You don't need to see my stuff! Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description below. That's expressvpn.com slash wheelhouse. Take back your internet privacy today. I wish I did it sooner. Trust no one. Siri, are you spying on me? No. Like this video, subscribe, contribute to the social media surveillance machine by following me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes and following Donut at Donut Media. Be nice. See you next time.